Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a great day so far. So today's video is really fun because it is all about weird pregnancy symptoms or weird and wacky things about pregnancy that they don't tell you. So I'm here to tell you all about them. <laughs> today's video I'm going to be sharing 10 just like weird symptoms or things I've noticed about pregnancy that I feel like I didn't know beforehand going into it. If you're new here, this is my second pregnancy. I'm currently 29 weeks pregnant with my second baby boy. Um, so I've seen some things, I've experienced some things, and I am here to tell you so that you are not shocked. Today's video is a totally just like wacky, silly video. This is meant to be really lighthearted and fun, so please take it with a grain of salt. If you don't experience these symptoms, that's totally cool. If you have more than these, that's totally cool too. This is just meant for us to laugh along together. If you're new in pregnancy, then maybe when these things come up, you'll realize it's totally normal and it will help give you an idea of what you're in for. And if you're later in your pregnancy like me, then you can laugh along with the jokes and just feel like you get it and you understand the silliness. Also, before we jump in real quick, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for the love you gave me on my recent video opening up about my car accident from a few years ago. Honestly, that video was probably the most vulnerable one I've ever put out and it's, like I mentioned in that video, it's the first time I've talked about it, so the outpouring of love and support that you guys gave me is just so, so special and so appreciated and I realized that was a little bit more of a serious video and that's why today I wanted to do one that's a little bit more lighthearted, but I couldn't get into today's video without just thanking you guys so much. Really from the bottom of my heart, it means a lot to me. So. Thank you for your continued support and all the kind words you left on that video. Thank you. Okay, so the very first pregnancy symptom that they don't tell you about is a hairy belly. Now this one, I understand, I'm like just jumping in with the weirdness, but I have talked to other pregnant women, I've experienced this twice myself, Pregnancy hormones will cause you to grow excess body hair that you probably wouldn't have if you weren't pregnant. It is the strangest thing, but I've experienced it with both pregnancies now, and it's not like I've got hair like all over the place. You guys can see me right now. I'm not like a wooly bear, I promise. <laughs> but my belly gets like, you know how occasionally your stomach can get like a long black hair on it or something like that? My belly will get extra hairs that just need a little bit more attending to. And I've seen this in my friends as well. You'll have to let me know if you experience the same thing, but it is definitely something that they don't tell you about. And so you go through your pregnancy just thinking like, whoa, I'm a little more hairy on my bump. And it's like you have this little pregnancy happy trail following you around. My first pregnancy, Jordan actually got me this like, because it really bothered me. And so Jordan got me this like electric razor that you could use in the shower, which I realized an electric anything in the shower doesn't sound safe, but it was like a waterproof one. And I would try and use it on my belly. But when I did that, Christian would actually start moving a lot and pushing back. And you could tell, I think the sound bothered him or maybe the vibrations, I don't know. So I ended up just like letting go of it not worrying about it. This pregnancy, I haven't worried about it. I'll like pluck occasionally here and there, but it's just one of those weird pregnancy things, man, and they don't tell you, so I'm here to tell you. The second pregnancy symptom that they don't tell you about are itchy legs, or just itchy skin in general, but really itchy legs will get you. And I have to say, before I jump into the details of it. There is a condition called cholestasis, which if you haven't heard of it, what it is is a condition with your liver where basically your liver like isn't flushing things out properly and it could impact the baby. So if you have itchy legs, you definitely wanna tell your healthcare provider, tell your doctor. That's what I did my first pregnancy because it was so beyond unbearable. Um, and there's some other sim symptoms with cholestasis as well that led me to be concerned about it my first time around. You can get a simple blood test, talk to your doctor, about it and figure out whether or not you have it. For me, I just went and got blood work done and we were able to rule that out luckily. However, itchy legs still progress. And I will say this is mainly like the middle of pregnancy. So I don't really notice it in the very early stages. It probably starts for me around like week 16 or 17. And then I don't notice it in the very end of pregnancy. Like right now I'm 29 weeks pregnant and the itchy legs are pretty much gone. But I read that it's essentially from your body picking up more blood and from again, pregnancy hormones, those things will just do wacky things to you, you guys. But from your from your pregnancy hormones and your body creating more 
blood and having more blood flow, it can make your skin dry and itchy. And so I will get the most insane itchy legs at nighttime. I would literally be scratching like this and there was no relief. I would put ice packs on them to try and stop it. I'd put lotion on them. I would exfoliate. I would like scrub them. There is no relief. Eventually you outgrow it. It is not a permanent thing. And then once you're pregnant, it doesn't bother you anymore. At least if you're like me, that's been my experience. Like I said, take everything said with a grain of salt, but people do not warn you about the itchy legs and it is shocking and it is so bothersome sometimes. I have found a couple of creams and a couple scrubs that really do help a lot. So I'll share those in my pregnancy essentials video that I'm putting together, but really like moisturizing and exfoliating will help. That's like all you can do in the interim. When I was concerned I had cholestasis my first pregnancy though, it's because I was waking up in the middle of the night with really, really itchy feet and really itchy legs. And my feet would itch so much that it was painful. So like I said, talk to your doctor if it feels like super bothersome just to make sure it's not cholestasis because if you do have it, it can be really bad. Um, but I've heard of multiple pregnant women having the itchy legs as a symptom without having cholestasis and it's crazy. Along those same lines, I've talked about how I found a couple like overnight lip balms that I've really fallen in love with this pregnancy. And the reason for that is reason number three, and that is chapped lips, which kind of falls within the dry skin. However, the reason behind the chapped lips is pregnancy congestion. That's the real number three. So people don't tell you that pregnancy congestion is like an actual congestion where you can't breathe. There's this feeling or there's this understanding that pregnant women run out of breath and that we're short on breath and that, you know, we get tired easily. And I'll talk about that in a second. But pregnancy congestion is so real. It leaves you feeling like your nose is actually blocked up, like you can't breathe, like you have this super stuffy nose that you have to blow your nose, but nothing's coming out and there's actually nothing blocking it up. It's crazy. Pregnancy congestion is so real. And it's one of those things that can stay with you throughout the whole pregnancy too. So I mentioned running out of breath and shortness of breath. That's number four. And what they don't tell you is that that happens very early in pregnancy oftentimes too. For me, I've experienced it pretty much as soon as I found out I was pregnant. I think I talked to you guys about how this time around um, I was giving a presentation at 12 weeks pregnant and I actually had to stop and tell the room like, hey guys, sorry, I'm pregnant. And like, I'm not just super nervous up here. Like, yes, public speaking can be nerve wracking, but that's actually not why I'm out of breath right now. It's because there's a human being inside of me growing. Um, so it's not just this stigma of like huge, big bellied pregnant women who get out of breath. It actually can happen to you when you're very early in, in your pregnancy. Maybe you just found out, maybe you're not showing it all yet, but you're running out of breath. And sometimes that can be the giveaway too. If you're trying to not tell people yet, if you're not at the point where you're ready to announce it, sometimes that's the giveaway where people will start to kind of pick up on the fact that you might be pregnant because you're so out of breath. There's just no controlling it. It's just your body's doing a lot of work. So they don't tell you how early it can start, but just be aware. You can run out of breath even when you're not doing anything, even when you're super tiny still, because you are pregnant. You're actually doing a ton, you just don't realize it. Number five that they don't tell you is that morning sickness is actually all day long sickness. And like I said, everybody's different. So that may not be the case for you. However, a lot of times morning sickness has this, again, sort of like, People have this vision that you have morning sickness, you're sick in the morning and then it goes away and then you feel a lot better for the rest of the day. And that may be the case. That was actually my experience with my first pregnancy. I would just be sick a couple hours when I first woke up, I would feel nauseous, I'd eat and then it would go away. However, this time around, I would stay feeling nauseous all day long until I went to sleep. And sometimes I couldn't go to sleep because I still felt nauseous. And that is, I feel like that's a little more common, at least from what I've heard, than just specifically in the morning. So they don't tell you that morning sickness may stick with you and it's totally normal if it does progress past 11 a.m. or whenever. There are, of course, also like extreme morning sickness cases, which people, you know, are hospitalized and people are getting so sick that they need medical attention and things like that too. That's a totally different story. But in general, people think morning sickness is only that first initial period when you first wake up and the reality is unfortunately it could last all day until you go to bed. 
Number six isn't a physical symptom, but it is something I've noticed in both pregnancies, and it's that people are nicer to you when you're pregnant. They don't tell you how much strangers' perception of you and the way strangers treat you or the way even just like acquaintances treat you. People are just nicer to you when you're expecting a baby. Jordan has noticed this as well, my husband. Like when we're out in public, it's almost eerie how much I get special treatment or like special interest from people being pregnant and not in a creepy way. I mean, yes, there can be creeps associated with it, but the, but I'm talking about like people holding doors open for you or people making small talk with you, people just engaging and treating you like you're special and fragile when you're pregnant. And then when the baby comes, like they're not holding doors open for that woman with a toddler or a baby. I mean, they should be. And Hopefully you're witnessing that, but in my experience, people aren't willing to help you as much once the baby's here as they are when you're pregnant, which makes no sense because you need the help when the baby's here, especially your first pregnancy. It is crazy how, like, if you're out in public and the cashier's like, oh, when are you due? Oh, is it your first? How far along are you? How are you feeling? You kind of get like those typical answers. And if you say it's your first pregnancy, it is like, all eyes on you, all attention on you. You are the most fragile being out there. But if you are walking through the door with a toddler, you're kind of viewed as like a nuisance. At least that's how I've seen it. At least that's how things seem to be in America. They don't tell you that one, people are so much nicer to you when you're pregnant than when you're not pregnant. And two, the attention goes away when you have the baby too, which is just a little wild. Number seven, which they don't tell you, is that things can vary very much from woman to woman, pregnancy to pregnancy, baby to baby. It is totally, totally normal for you to have one experience with your pregnancy and all of these symptoms and all of these experiences and then your best friend who's pregnant at the same time has had a completely opposite experience and that's totally normal and it doesn't mean one of you was right and the other was wrong. I probably sound like a broken record talking about it like that because that's something I really try and stress on my channel. I really want to normalize the fact that we each have our own styles, we each have our own experiences, our own parenting styles, our own preferences. Sometimes when it comes to motherhood, there's this general idea of like, you know, a general flow of how pregnancies and motherhood looks. But the reality is that it's very, very different from person to person. And it's different from pregnancy to pregnancy too. So I feel like they don't tell you that you could have two pregnancies, three pregnancies, four, and they could all be completely different than the other. There's no standard way of doing it and there's no standard way for you too. So if you're in your second pregnancy, just be mindful, be aware of that and know that it's totally okay if it's not like your first two for good or for bad. Now the next thing they don't tell you about is one of my favorite things on the list and it is pee sneezes. <laughs> if you haven't heard of a pee sneeze, then let me enlighten you. A pee sneeze is when you are sneezing or coughing or making any sudden movement that causes you to unexpectedly pee a little bit. And I have noticed this more in my second pregnancy than my first pregnancy. And again, it sounds a little TMI, but honestly, like everything with pregnancy is a little bit TMI sometimes. But I've noticed this more so in my second pregnancy because with my first pregnancy, everything was just like a little tighter and newer and it hadn't birthed the human yet. And then labor apparently makes you pee your pants uncontrollably for the rest of your life. Um, that's dramatic. And it's funny, when I got sick this winter and I had a really bad cold, I was sneezing all the time and I was coughing all the time. And it's like, if I had a really hard cough or if I sneezed, I knew, I knew I was either gonna hit, get hit with a little bit of pee, surprisingly, even if you don't think you have to pee, like it just comes out of nowhere, or I would get round ligament pain and get like a shocking stabbing pain. It was one or the other. I was either gonna get round ligament pain or I was gonna pee my pants a little bit. Sometimes I would pee so much when I didn't expect it that I would have to change my outfit. Like the one time I accidentally peed through my dress a little bit. And Jordan is always, I think he's like slightly disgusted slash slightly wants to make fun of me. I'm not exactly sure where he stands on it. But the reality is that this is womanhood. This is what it takes to bring kids into the world. And people don't tell you about pee sneezes. So I am here to tell you about them. Number nine on the list that they don't tell you is that similar to how I mentioned that things can vary woman to woman, your water breaking can also vary extremely depending on the situation. So I have friends who have had to stand in the bathtub because their water was just like gushing out or their amniotic fluid was, kind of like in the movies where you think it's gonna be like a fire hydrant feeling. 
I've had friends who have had that experience and then for me I had like a little bit trickling out and I thought I peed my pants. There's a lot of pee talk in this video guys, I apologize. But I thought I just like peed my pants because when you're 40 plus weeks pregnant, fluid just kind of comes out and you just don't question it because you're pregnant and there's fluid coming out. Um, the reason for that was actually because I had a high break and I'm convinced Christian kicked and broke my water because he was kicking a lot. He kicked super hard and within a few minutes later it had started trickling out and it literally it felt like I had just unexpectedly peed a little bit but what I learned was that I had a high break up here like up by my ribs and so the amniotic fluid had to flow all the way through my system before it came out of my body and that's why by the time it did come out of my body it was just more of a trickle and less of a gush so people don't tell you that that's a possibility and nobody told me that so when my water broke I thought it was just normal fluid. We like went out and got pizza. We went about the day and then it happened two or three more times and I was like, oh shoot, I should probably call my doctor. So, and that's what it turned out to be. So I'm here to tell you that your water could be a gush, yes, but don't necessarily wait for that. If you are 40 plus weeks pregnant, if you are even close to 40 weeks pregnant and you feel any kind of fluid come out that feels like more than normal, call your doctor, because it could very well be your water breaking. And then last on the list is all about the appetite. Appetite is a big topic of conversation with pregnancies, and what they don't tell you is that it will actually fluctuate throughout your pregnancy, and you may even lose it towards the end of your pregnancy. So I feel like there's this general understanding that pregnant women, we eat a lot, we're eating for two, you know, people are always like, oh, the baby needs this, or you're eating for two, it's okay that you ordered two entrees. but that may not be the case. You may not want that much food the further you get in pregnancy. In the beginning, yes, you are just like devouring everything and you're starving all the time and you quite literally are insatiable because you can eat this insane amount and then be super, super hungry an hour later and feel like you didn't eat anything at all. But in the end, the bigger you get, you may actually lose your appetite. And that's kind of where I'm at right now in my pregnancy. I'm getting so big, my stomach feels so stretched that I just don't crave food. I don't, I can't imagine eating food because I feel like I don't have any room in my belly. And I remember that from the last pregnancy too. It's like when you get towards the end of your pregnancy, you just start to lose your appetite and you kind of have to remind yourself that like, hey, I need that fuel. I need to keep eating. And people don't talk about that a lot. So it just feels like a very strange sensation. But if you're experiencing the same thing, totally normal. Just make sure you're eating lots of snacks. Make sure you're factoring in your meals, planning them out, whatever you need to do to make sure you're getting enough food for you and the baby because you may not feel it from your body as much as you did in the beginning. In the beginning, your body is like, hey, hey, I need food right now. And at the end, you're like, oh yeah, cool, time to eat. Oh, I can't picture it. <laughs> All right guys, so that's everything for today's video about what they don't tell you about pregnancy. I hope this helped bring you guys some laughs. I hope if you're experiencing any of these things, you realize it's normal. I'm doing it along with you. Um, and yeah, just something totally funny and wacky to do. If you guys have any other ideas for like funny pregnancy videos like this, leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching though, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.